Hi, I'm Michael Goddard. Let's talk about the parts in your box. Come on over here. So the tray in particular that we're looking at is going to be what I would call this right tray right here. Okay. So uh, real quick, we're going to look at the beams. We're going to look at the wheels and the gears. Uh, we're going to go down here, look at some of the cross blocks, and look at some of the angle beams. So I've got them set up roughly in about the same uh, orientation. So uh, these are your beams. The nice thing is, is that uh, for every color, you've got a, a large and a small. So for instance, with the black, you've got the 15 length and the 9 length. Uh, with this turquoise, you've got the 13 and the 7. With the, I don't know, purple fuchsia, and here are the 11 and the 5 beams and then the 3. Notice all odd numbers. So uh, over here uh, on the back of your sheet, you've also got this nice uh, measuring uh, tool here. Of course, the very first one there is a little bit too long there, but you can kind of see, you can always put these up there against, as well as the axles, uh, if you need to measure them. All right, uh, the beams are pretty straightforward, uh, no pun intended. Uh, one of the things that you'll, you do a lot of is just get the pins and you'll just stick them in the beams and they get a nice little snap. And you'll be doing that over and over millions of times. Let's look up here at the, uh, the gears that we've got. So, uh, these right here, these uh, white, well, these aren't gears at all. These are little hubs. And you can use them in isolation, although the most common thing that you're going to want to do, and you might want to just do this initially just to kind of get them going, is to put the tires there on the wheels. Uh, that'll save you a little bit of space in your tray. Uh, you can also do that uh, with these wheels as well. So you can put the, the tire around it. You hardly ever use the wheel without the tire. So I would just go ahead and start doing that. I think I've got it. Um, according to the project requirements, I should have two. I've got three. I may have some pieces from another box kind of mixed in here, but that's okay. Um, looking at the gears, uh, the largest ones here, I think it's 36 uh, tooth. Um, all of the, the gears that you're looking here are all double beveled gears. Let me show you what that means. Um, if you look at the individual gear tooth, uh, there's a straight part, but then there's a, this sort of like triangular uh, edge here on either side. What that's going to allow you to do is going to allow you to put these gears at angles, and so you could have one of them rotating uh, in one direction, and that will cause the other gear to rotate um, in the other direction. And so the, that's uh, that feature is called a double bevel because it's beveled on both sides. That's what the the double. So you've got. Um, you've got them in different uh, different sizes. You do have some pinholes here and some other axle holes that you can attach. Uh, the smallest gears, and then these little flex beams. Uh, they're good for putting axles through, and then they're also sort of kind of grippy if you have everything. Let's slide down here to the bottom left uh, tray. So this part right here, one of the most valuable pieces in the whole entire uh, box, because. Uh, whenever you have your basic skid steer bot where you have two motors in the front, this is the back wheel and it slides around. Um, uh, Lego also sells metal ones, uh, like a, a metal ball and socket. Um, I do recommend that. Some of the other things you've got here, uh, we ca I call these the biscuits. They just allow you to uh, to build uh, you know, in two directions. In fact, anything that's a cross block, this would be like a biscuit cross block. Um, it's going to allow you to maybe build up and down and then also left and right or forward and backward. Uh, just gets a couple different colors here. Uh, only have two of these, these sort of double pin connectors. You've got uh, pin up, pin down, and then you can uh, uh, pin uh, in and out there. I call these horse cross blocks. Let me grab a pin here. So this, the idea here is you can uh, plug this maybe into a beam. All of a sudden now you, you've got beam support this way, but then you can attach another beam uh, vertically. And then also, even if you want to, if I can get it right there, stick some pins in here and start building out uh, in this direction as well, uh, into, you know, forward and backward, as it were. So that's uh, the advantages there of the cross blocks. Really good for 90 degree uh, stability. I call these the H blocks, just because they, they look like an H there. Uh, Again, good for uh, building multiple beams up and down, but also forward and backward. And then we come to the angle beams uh, up here. So mostly just use the letters. These are T beams. Of course, they're all upside down. So put them to be looking like a T. Then uh, these right angle beams. I call these a you know a four by two or two by four. Normally you kind of would use the longer number, but sometimes I use the shorter number. Anyway, 
uh, we've got these, and then jumping over here, we've got the three by fives. So different color, different size. Uh, these are uh, three by sevens. I just kind of, I know you could say it's two, and then maybe you could say seven. I just I just use that common name there, uh, three by sevens. You notice you've got an axle hole on either end there. Uh, sliding back around here, we've got the I beams, uh, and then the uh, the four by four angle beams, and then I call these the J beams. That as you can see. There at the very end, they do have those axle holes, which if you stick an axle in there, which I'll do real quickly, then as you turn that axle, you're going to turn the, uh, the entire angle beam. By way of contrast, if you put the axle in one of those holes, then it's going to dangle. So, all right. So there's the right container. We'll see you next time.